Ravi Chandan and you're watching Educate India. In this video, we are going to learn about web hosting. So if you want to host any website to any server, so what is the best process that we can follow? So we are going to just use Azure DevOps to create some build pipeline and release pipeline that will handle your deployment and build. And finally, we are going to deploy this to virtual machine using IIS. So I have already created one virtual machine using Azure Cloud. So I'll upload some more videos on how we can create a virtual machine using Azure Cloud. So I have used a free trial subscription and using that I have created a Windows virtual machine. So you can see this is a VM and I have connected using RDP. So I'm using Mac, but I have connected through RDP. So I'm able to open the Windows server. So this will act as a server and in Visual Studio, we are going to create one project and in Azure DevOps, we are going to create the pipeline and this will here we are going to store our code also so here we'll use repos to store our code and that will act as a repository and then we are going to create build pipeline and release pipeline and uh, finally we are going to deploy our code to this windows server and then we'll try to access that particular website using internet okay so let's start the video so first we are going to create a basic .NET Core project. So that will be a basic website. So simply I'll click on file new solution. Here we have some predefined templates. So I'm going to use web application model view controller MVC ASP.NET Core. So simply click on next and I'm using Visual Studio for Mac. So it has a different UI. If you are using Windows that will have a different UI, but you will have all the options there also. So here I am selecting target framework as 3.1 .NET Core 3.1 and authentication. I'm keeping no authentication. So let's click on next here. The path you can give a different path and then project name and solution name. So let's say I'm giving the project name as website. Now we can click on create. So it is going to create one basic MVC project. So you can see you have a website solution, then you have a website project and it's a basic MVC model view controller project. And in view, you have CS HTML files and uh, in controller, you will have controller and model. You can have classes. Okay. And basic app setting files and program.cs and startup.cs. Okay. So now I'll try to just run it and we'll see what is the output of the file. Let me select the Chrome browser. Yeah. Now I'll just run it. Okay. So it's running on localhost and uh, it is just displaying a basic website like welcome page. Okay. With some tabs and links. So we'll just do a small modification. We'll just modify some content. So let's go to index and let's write here. This is my first ASP.NET Core website. Let's save it. We'll see this is my first ASP.NET Core website. So this is our website and now our code is ready. So we are going to deploy this on server. So we are going to host it on server. So one way is simply you can publish this project. So right click, you can see you have a publish option. You can publish to folder. You can copy that folder and you can go to server. So if this is a server, so you can go to C drive and inet pub ww root. You can simply copy it here and then in IAS you can configure it. You can just refer that path. So that that that's also one way of hosting the project, but that is a manual way here. We are not going to follow the manual process. So we'll just create one pipeline and that will handle your build and deployment. So that is a standard way of doing the deployment. Okay. So now we got the code. Now we are going to push this code to Azure DevOps. So if you open the Azure DevOps, so right now in repos, it's empty. There is no any code. So we are going to push the same code, whatever website we created here. And finally, from here, we are going to create a build pipeline and release pipeline. And then we'll try to deploy our code to the Windows server. Okay. So let's do this. So I'm going to open the terminal. And, uh, 
let's see the project I created website project okay so get status okay so these are the different files that we added and we modified index file so I'll simply do git add dot then I'll commit the code I'll write initial commit now I'm going to push the code so to push the code I need this origin I need to copy this so let's run this command I have added to the origin and uh, now I'll just push the code I have pushed the code to Azure DevOps so we'll we can see it at repos we have just pushed our code in Azure DevOps just now okay so one step is already done so we have created a website and now we have pushed our code in Azure DevOps now the second step is we need to create a build pipeline and release pipeline okay so in the previous video I have already shown how we can create a build pipeline and in a detailed way so you can just go and watch that video to get a better understanding so here quickly I'm going to create a build pipeline so I'll not explain everything because I have already created a separate video but uh, quickly I'm going to create a new pipeline for this so we'll hit on new pipeline we'll use a classic editor we'll just select a source educate India master branch continue and here we are going to select the template spnet core we'll hit on apply it will add the basic task it looks good you can see the source agent okay it looks good now we can just change the name like website we'll save it and we'll run it You can see it's running okay so it will take some time okay so it's telling Ubuntu environment okay we need to change the agent let me see what's the agent okay let's cancel it and let me change the agent we want to run this on Windows So if you go to pipeline, okay, agent is Ubuntu. Let's change it to Windows and here it looks good. Okay, now save and queue. Windows, okay, now run it. Okay, this will take some time. So meanwhile, we'll create a release pipeline. So here we can go, we have an option to create a new release pipeline. We'll click here. And here we need to select IIS so these are the kind of basic template and what are the advantages of this template if we are using the basic template then it is going to add some predefined task so we are going to select IIS website deployment let's click on apply and here we'll change the environment stage name so it let's call it dev and later on we can add the artifact so the build is just running so we can add after the build is successful and we can see in the task section it has added basic task like is web app manage and is web app deploy so this is going to enable the is so let's check this and uh, this particular task is to create or update so first time it is going to create the website and later on whenever we'll run this particular pipeline so it is going to update the website so if you're doing any modification so we can quickly update it using the release pipeline okay so it can take the latest build and it will just trigger the deployment and these are the different paths like physical path so www root like we saw in the server we have this path inetpub www root so we want to push our uh, dlls and all the executables here okay so let's let's call it website so i'm just modifying the path so it is going to create one folder website and then it will keep all the executables and binaries in the website okay 
and this is kind of application user pass through so this is kind of physical path authentication so right now i'm just selecting default application user pass through so it is going to use ias underscore users and uh, you can give you know any, any different windows authentication also if you want so i'm going to use the default for now okay and you can add the bindings also okay like uh, the port name mapping so the you will have binding option here also here in the dev so right now it's showing 80 port if you want to add multiple bindings so you can keep just click on add binding and you can modify it so i'll not ch change it there because i'm i just want to you know show the basic steps and later on we can discuss in detail in the upcoming videos okay and one more thing is we need to select a deployment group so this azure devops it doesn't know like where it has to deploy so we have to add a deployment group like virtual machine details so how we can add the vm details in the pipeline okay so that we can do by creating a deployment group so let me open it in different tab you can see we have a deployment group option so it's saying define a logical group of target machines for parallel deployment okay so we are going to click on deployment here we can give a any name okay and we can give any description uh, just click create so this will generate a registration script and personal access token so we'll just check it and we'll just copy this script and wherever you want to deploy or, or just add this deployment group so just you need to go to that particular virtual machine and just you need to open the powershell and just paste this so whatever we copied from here you have to first check it and we can simply copy it and we need to paste it and just hit enter here you can give no we can simply press enter and it's saying vm educate india started successfully if you go to azure devops and if you click on deployment group so it will say it has added one deployment group educate india app and the target status is one online if you click on available pools so we have this available pool like educate india app go to release pipeline and we'll click on this refresh icon and we'll select the deployment group so we have added the vm details like we are telling whatever code you want to uh, deploy so just this is a vm de detail so this is a target information like this is a deployment group this is the target machine where this particular release pipeline is going to deploy the code so we need to add the target machine so we have just added it by creating the deployment targets okay and before that because this is a dotnet code project so we need to add the dotnet core runtime so you can click on plus so install dotnet core runtime on the server so we'll just simply add it and we can select 3.1 version because we have created project in 3.1 and then after that it it will just perform a is reset and once it installed the dotnet core runtime after that it is going to enable the ias and then it is going to configure the physical path and all the authentication and finally it is going to deploy so this is a basic set of tasks so no need to modify it if you want to modify it you can give a different name or packages or folders or you have some file related information like file transform and variable substitution so if you want to use json and also you can do it so right now we'll we'll keep it simple we'll understand about these things later in the upcoming videos we have added a simple ias template that has added two tasks and we have just added one more task for dotnet core runtime the basic steps okay and we'll give a name like website okay release pipeline so let's save it now we'll go to release so we have this pipeline ready 